Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Thursday, December 10th, and from some major headway on a coronavirus vaccine to a lawsuit against the Toledo Lucas County Health Department, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's just get a quick look at our weather. So, highs will reach close to 50 degrees both tomorrow and Saturday, but Saturday does bring some widespread rain with more heavy showers coming in the afternoon. Then overnight Sunday, we'll get some cooler temps coming in, allowing for a colder setting to take place with a few snow showers possible. So if you're like me and you love the snow, some fun news for your weekend. But unfortunately, Saturday's game between Bowling Green State University and Miami University is canceled because of COVID-19 cases on Miami's football team. The canceled game is now declared a no contest according to Miami's program. So Bowling Green ends the year 0-5 with this canceled game. But looking at high schools locally, lawyers for the Ohio Christian Education Network filed a lawsuit Monday against the Toledo Lucas County Health Department's health order, which they say is unconstitutional. As a reminder, the order requires that students in grades 7 through 12 learn remotely and that all extracurriculars on school premises be canceled until January 11th. So the Ohio Christian Education Network is a network of private religious institutions facilitated by Citizens for Community Values with member schools throughout the community. So Monclova Christian Academy, St. John's, and Emmanuel Christians are all schools that are cited as lawsuit plaintiffs. Before filing, filing the lawsuit, though, the group had urged the Lucas County Health Department to rescind that health order and just sit down with them and have a conversation about um, some alternatives that they could have. So in the lawsuit, plaintiffs argue that for many parents, teachers, and private school administrators, providing faith-based instruction is an act of worship and therefore the order is unconstitutional because they believe it violates their First Amendment right of freedom of religion. The health department was supposed to discuss the school order on Tuesday morning in a special meeting, but due to that lawsuit, they adjourned before they got to it, and then they canceled their meeting for the following day uh, where they were supposed to continue discussing the school order. And a similar fight is happening up north in Michigan. Parents, friends, and coaches from the hashtag Let Them Play group on Facebook held a rally on the Michigan State Capitol lawn to encourage Governor Gretchen Whitmer and the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services to put children back in school in person and back in sports and other activities. As a reminder, the state has extended its three-week pause that restricts restricts things like in-person learning for high school, organized sports, theaters, colleges, bowling, bingo halls, dine-in restaurants, fitness classes, and salon and spa services. Now, the hashtag Let Them Play group says stopping school sports was, quote, not supported by any science. They say that the Michigan High School Athletic Association submitted its numbers from the fall sports season, which proved that sports were not spreaders of coronavirus. In fact, it was quite the opposite, with zero hospitalizations and zero deaths traced back to the athletes. Uh, they said all of this in a press release. The group also claims that the studies have shown that suicides and suicidal thoughts have, quote, greatly increased because of the isolation and hopelessness Michigan's kids are feeling without sports and school. There are 19,000 members statewide who belong to the hashtag Let Them Play organization on Facebook. And in Ohio, we have our own health order that's been extended. The state's curfew is now going through January 2nd. So the curfew was originally set to expire today uh, and it extends from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. each night. But it does allow for a number of exceptions, including going to or from work, leaving for an emergency or to receive medical care, getting groceries, going to the pharmacy, picking up food, and yes, you can let your dog out or go for a walk. So drive-throughs, takeout options, and delivery may continue during during that curfew period. However, indoor dining is required to close at 10 p.m. So specifically today, DeWine noted that the curfew will cause some difficulty for some highly anticipated events in our near future. So the health department has issued a variance for the following four events that will likely extend past 10 p.m. So for the Columbus Crew MLS championship game, Monday night football games with the Browns and Ravens, Monday night football games with the Bengals and Steelers, and UC conference championship football game which they are anticipating. So basically this is allowed because the events are outside and spectators will be expected to wear masks and socially distance. But DeWine said the bigger concern is with people gathering for parties and that sort of thing to watch these games. He asked that people who 
are planning to go to these events with people outside of their household, just rethink going. And with the holidays falling into that time frame, DeWine wanted to specify that religious ceremonies like Midnight Mass are exempt from this. So keep that in mind as you're putting together your plans. DeWine also issued Stay Safe Ohio Protocol today, put together by a group of state doctors. And this isn't an order, but it's really a list of strongly urged rules to follow over the next 21 days. And they include stay at home, wear your mask, Keep interactions short and stay apart. Wash your hands frequently. Work from home. Celebrate safely and celebrate small. Don't eat or drink with anyone outside of your household. Limit travel. Keep weddings and funerals safe. And enjoy safe holiday activities like driving through to see Christmas lights and that sort of thing within your familial unit. So, DeWine said the next several weeks will be the toughest yet as the biggest holiday season is right around the corner. And while we're, quote, riding the biggest wave of COVID-19 that we've had so far. With the first doses of the vaccine expected to be shipped out next week, DeWine said the state can't afford to overwhelm its hospitals with what he called a holiday tsunami. But what exactly is happening with the vaccine? Well, a government advisory panel met today to decide whether or not to endorse mass use of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. And just before 6 p.m., they voted to, in fact, endorse it. So. The FDA is expected to follow the recommendation issued just this evening by its expert advisors. The advisory group, in a 17 to 4 vote with one abstination, concluded that the shot appears safe and effective against the coronavirus in people 16 and older. So how do these panels even work? Well, they're kind of like a science court, right? During the day-long session, the panel debated and picked apart the data that they had in public, and this whole thing was live streamed, which you can go back on our Facebook page and watch for yourself. Now, the FDA is not required to follow the committee's advice, but again, it is expected to. And once that happens, the U.S. will begin shipping millions of doses. In fact, Ohio is expected to get their first shipment on Tuesday of next week, and that will first go to long-term care facilities and frontline workers. So later this month, the FDA is expected to pass judgment on another vaccine candidate developed by Moderna that has proven to be about as about as effective as Pfizer shot. And a third candidate by AstraZeneca is also making its way through the pipeline. So we've got those to look out for. But before I go, as always, let's leave on a positive note and restore some of our faith in humanity. Liam Gossett, a five-year-old boy in Tennessee, is raising money to give other kids the Christmas that they deserve. He came up with this idea all on his own to run a hot chocolate stand to raise money for for those kids who are in need. Liam's mom shared the plan on our Facebook page and then the donations just started rolling in. Friends and neighbors donated supplies. They sent him money from across the country and packed his block on Saturday night all just to get some, some hot chocolate. Liam raised $1,400, which his family is using to bring a great Christmas to a local single mom and her three kids. And while Liam might be young, he's no stranger to hard times himself. His parents adopted him and his two sisters out of the foster care system just this spring. So now he's doing all he can to bring joy to others. How heartwarming is that? I absolutely love this story. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.